Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another experiment. I have made a lot of videos about pushing model trains to their absolute limits, but today I'm going to do it by running them on badly laid track, just for a change. Usually derailments are something you want to avoid on your model railway, but not today. Today I am going to be causing them deliberately. I have built three test tracks, all of them bad, but they do get progressively worse, and then I've got eight locomotives or contestants, all different shapes and sizes, and they are going to take it in turns to traverse my dodgy test tracks, and their job is going to be not to derail. Two strikes and they are out, so two derailments, they are knocked out of the competition and we'll see which of these locos is the best at staying on the track even when that track is horribly laid. One good question is why? Why on earth do I want to do this? Well, mainly for entertainment purposes, I think it will make for an interesting experiment and I think it will just be fun. Also though, we might learn something. We might learn more about what types of badly laid track causes the most derailments. Is it tight curves? Is it uneven track? Is it points? Let's find out. I also want to learn more about what types of locomotive are the most likely to derail on badly laid track. Is it locos with larger wheelbases? Is it front bogies? Is it diesels that run on two bogies? Let's find out, this should be really interesting. So, let me show you the first test track and then we'll get some locos onto it and see if we can't make some of them derail. Never thought I'd be saying that, but today, that is the job. The first test track is the mildest that I'm going to be using today. It's the only one of today's tracks that, let's say, a beginner could feasibly build and think it's okay. And that's because the track pieces are all put together properly, they're laid on a flat surface. It's just the choice of track pieces and the order that I've put them in that is the problem. So here's what the locos have got to do. They start on this straight piece here and they go across the set of points. So far, so good. Nothing wrong with that. But then we've got a tight curve, a first radius curve. Most locos don't like that, particularly larger ones. And then we go on to another first radius curve in the opposite direction. So we've got a bit of an S bend and then a short straight on the end for the loco to stop on. Then the loco will reverse, go over the two tight curves backwards and then through the point onto the back siding, which is another tight S bend and finish on the straight at the end there. And that will be challenge passed if the locos don't derail by that point. Here are the contestants then, so we've got, starting at this end, little 040 Peckett, I think that one's going to do well, that is my prediction of the winner. Comment down below and let me know what your prediction is. Then we've got a Backman Pannier tank engine, that's an 060. Then we've got the Oxford N7 tank engine, which is an 062, so a few more wheels to worry about. Then we've got a large wheelbase tank engine with the Hornby 52XX, that one is going to be interesting. Then we've got a small tender loco, worried about this one. This is a 240, so it's got a pair of leading wheels at the front. That ought to be a challenge. Then we've got a 440, this is a steam locomotive with a bogey at the front. We'll see how that goes. Then we've got a diesel, this is a Dapol Class 29, that's a Bobo. We'll see how that goes. And then we've got a large wheelbase tender locomotive to finish with. That is the Hornby P2. I think that might fall on the first hurdle, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's commence the first test then. Can the Hornby Peckett survive bad combinations of tight curves? 50%, here we go. And stop at the end, no problem at all. Now I'm going to switch the point and reverse the Peckett, and that will be challenge passed, if it survives without derailing. Okay, well done Peckett, that is a pass, you are on to the next round. Okay, next loco, we have the Backman 94XX pannier tank. Slightly longer loco this with a larger wheelbase. Will that make a difference? Let's see, 50% speed. Oh, it's a faster loco, this one. I have to slow it down for the end, otherwise it will go off the end and die. I don't want that. Switch the points, try it in reverse. Are we still on the track? Yes, we are. Okay, challenge passed. Well done, Backman. Next loco then, Oxford N7, slightly larger loco yet again, this time with a set of trailing wheels on the back. I think this we could start to see problems here, folks. Here we go. We're okay forwards, that's a pass. Switch the points. I think this might be the problem. I'm ho hoping to be proved wrong. Yes, proved wrong. Okay, 
N7 passed. That's a surprise. Okay, an even longer tank engine. Next, we have the massive Hornby Great Western 52XX. Forwards we go, let's see. This is a slower loco, which might help it. All right, it's quite impressive on first radius there, but will it do as well in reverse? Let's see. Everything has so far. Ooh, slowing down a bit. Yeah. Absolutely fine. That is a massive surprise. Okay, well done. You're on to the next round. Well, this one is terrifying. I'll definitely be slowing this one down before it reaches the end of the track. It is the Backman precedent. Let's find out what happens when we throw a tender into the mix. So here we go. Forwards. Good Lord, that's a fast loco. All right, it did it though, I think. Let's reverse it. Ridiculously fast. There we go. Okay, pass the test. Scary, but successful. Let's try a slightly larger tender engine then. This one with a front bogey on the front. It's the Hornby D16. Okay, let's give it a try. Forwards. All right, seems okay. Let's reverse, switch the point. All right, still no casualties. I'm surprised. Right, let's try a diesel. Dapol class 29, let's see if this baby will stay on the track. You know, after everything we've seen so far, I think it probably will. Yep, okay forwards. Let's try and reverse over that point. I'm amazed that these guys are doing this without a problem. Yep, no problem. That means there's only one loco left. It is the Hornby P2. My goodness me, this is a very big loco. Up to now, I would have said, no way this is going to do it, but everything else has succeeded, so let's find out. Go on, P2, good luck. That is impressive. <laughs> right, reverse. Let's come on, let's have a derailment on this first round. Wow. <laughs> So, that is every loco on the first round on the tight first radius curves in S-bend formations passed with flying colours. So, that is really surprising. It seems first radius alone is not enough to derail locos. Now, does that mean you should just buy first radius track and make nice compact layouts? Well, no, because of course the real problem with first radius comes when you start coupling rolling stock and then the tight curves will start to cause problems. So don't go out and build first radius layouts unless you're wanting to use small locos and open wagons. But locomotives on their own do not seem to care about points and first radius curves as long as they're mounted on nice flat track. So I'm going to have to up my game, I think. I'm going to have to introduce these locos to some slightly nastier track work. Okay, test track two, and I definitely think I'm going to get some locos with this one. So, I've done away with the tight first radius S-bends because we know the locos can handle those. So instead, we're moving on into the realms of badly laid track. So this test track starts off with a double straight, which is connected to a set of points, and that left fish plate is not correctly inserted, so we've got a bump in the track there. Then the locos will be expected to go through those points onto a piece of straight track, which again, the fish plates haven't been pushed together properly, straight into a first radius curve where again, the fish plates are not all the way pushed together. There is quite a gap at the top there. Then we go straight into a second radius right hand turn and the right hand side fish plate is not properly connected. And then we go on to a straight at the end. Again, the fish plates are not pushed together all the way. It will be an absolute miracle if all of these locos pass this test without derailing. So, let's subject them to it. Okay, first up, the Peckett. I think if this one derails, we're in trouble because none of the others are going to manage if this can't. So, here we go, forwards, over the point. Bit of a bump there, but no derailing. Again, bumps over the badly laid fish plates, but it has managed it forwards. Let's try reversing. It's no 4 0, so it could be much the same in reverse. Okay, there we go. No problems. The Peckett has passed. Okay, the Pannier tank, much heavier loco, this one. Could that cause problems? Let's see. Here we go. Oh, straight off. So I'm going to say it was that first dodgy fish plate that caused that derailment. So that is one strike for the Pannier. <laughs> 
This could be a very short round. Let's try it one more time then. Remember, two strikes and it's out. Go a bit slower this time. Now, has it derailed or just stopped? Uh, it has not derailed, so I can just try and... I think it's this track piece here, actually. There we go. Is it still on? I think it might be still on. Right. Reverse. Push these tracks together. Oh, it might actually pass. It's just trouble getting power to it. Has it derailed? See, I'm not going to disqualify them for cutting out because that's all right. It's just the derailing thing that's not allowed. All right. Okay, well, so one strike for the pannier. I'll write that down because if this derails again, it's now out of the competition. Right, next up, a loco that I think will fail this round. If you ask me, I think it will. The flanges, I think, are quite fine on the Oxford N7. But will that be enough to stop this from passing the test? Let's see. 50% speed to start with. It's derailed on the points. <laughs> so, again, I will be fair. I will let this have a 30% run. And uh, if it fails again, it is disqualified. Okay, 30% run. Okay, so it stopped, but it has not derailed at this point. So, I can just give it a... A helping hand with this fish plate. All right. And it's off. It's off on that curve. Let's just watch that again. There we go. Yeah, you can see that front wheel. In fact, as soon as it went over that dodgy fish plate that wasn't connected together properly, those front wheels jumped off the track. Yeah, you can see that really clearly. Okay, well, Sadly, that means the Oxford N7 will be leaving this competition. I mean, it's not the Loco's fault, but it did not pass the test. Next up then, we've got the large tank engine of today, the Hornby 52XX. This should not survive this test based on what the N7 just did, but let's find out. 50% speed to start with. All right, obviously that was a derailment. Tell you what, we might wipe every other Loco out of this test. We might do. But let's try the 30% test. I don't know. I feel like this might do it. I don't, I don't know why I think that. Here we go. 30%. Or oh, probably because 30 is incredibly slow for this loco. Ah, uh, no. We're off. It is the front drivers that are off, folks. Okay, yep, yeah, there we go, the front driver's off. So, so far it seems the biggest killer is having pieces of track not put together properly, uh, followed by a curve, or maybe even preceded by a curve. So, so far that is the big killer, and only the small wheelbase locos seem to be able to cope with that at the moment. So, Hornby 52XX, you're out for the count. Okay, tender loco then, we've got the Backman Precedent. My prediction will be that this will derail on the 50% speed test because it's just far too fast at 50% speed, so it's not going to be stable. If this passes the test, it will be on the 30% speed test. Uh, so let's find out. Here we go. Let's hit it with 50. <laughs> Straight off. <laughs> okay. Again, same place. Yeah, that point is an absolute killer, isn't it? Absolute killer. Let's try again more slowly. Okay, 30%. We are still on the track, folks. We are still on the track. I just need to push these plates together. And we're still going. Amazing. The precedent has managed it forwards. Can it do it backwards? 30%. Here we go. Applying pressure. Bit more. Almost had to catch it. I'm surprised. The precedent has passed. Okay, the D16, quite a fast loco, this one. Again, I reckon this could be similar to the precedent. So 50%. No, stayed on. Okay, it's done it. 50% speed in forwards direction. Let's try it in reverse. I think that tender is off, folks. Shall we have that again just to watch? Okay, take two. All right, so this time it is not the loco derailing, but the lightweight tender. So maybe the instability from the tender being much lighter 
is causing the derailments. That's very interesting. Let's have that one more time so I can get a bit closer. Yeah, hopefully you got that that time. So we've got to hope that at the slower speeds, it's stable enough to pass this test. Okay, let's do a 30% test then. I'm hoping it will pass this and then we can see it on the next round, which will be interesting. Okay, okay, the, the usual stoppage, that's not such an issue. Tender looking quite unstable, but still on the track. Okay, reverse. Will that tender stay on the track? Yes, it has. And I need to just help it out over this point. Oh, that was seriously dodgy, but all the wheels appear to be on the track. So with one strike, the D16 gets to try the next round. <laughs> Ooh, the next round, folks. The next round. So it seems like axles with a lighter load on them are more inclined to derail. So if that theory is true, then we shouldn't see much of a problem with the diesel here, with the Class 29, because each of its axles has got quite a bit of load. And also it's not that fast of a loco. So I predict this will do it. Maybe not at 50, but I think it will see the next round. Let's see. Power. Double check the wheels are all on. I heard a lot of clacking, but I think we're okay. Okay, so the referee has cleared the Class 29 for the next part of the test. At the halfway mark, the wheels are still on the track. Right, let's see then. Will this be the second loco to clear this test at 50% speed? Which is quite fast on this diesel. Wow, so Dapol, not bad at all. Wasn't necessarily expecting that to start with, but that is looking pretty darn good. That has passed without a single strike. Next folks, we have the P2. And I predict we're gonna be saying goodbye to the P2 today because as we know, lightweight tenders seem to be causing problems. They did with the D16. So that is gonna be an issue with the P2. We've also got a lightweight pony truck on this Loco 2. So that's an issue. Couple that with the relatively high speed and the massive wheelbase of the P2. I think this will derail straight away, but Happy to be proved wrong. Let's find out. Forwards, 50%. No, hasn't derailed, so we can continue. Oh, tender is off. Let's have another look at that. This is not a second chance. This is just me filming a close-up on what happened, just so I can get better quality shot of it. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Different thing happened there. So uh, that doesn't count, because uh, that was still at 50% speed. Let's just do it again, see if we can get the tender to come off. All right, so unreliable. It's the front, the front pony truck coming off now. And the front pony managed to stay on the track during the first test. Here we go again. There we go, we've got a bit of a tender calamity there. Yeah, all the loco wheels are still on the track. So the lightweight tender is the vehicle that's derailed. So it gets the 30% test. The fact that the Loco does seem to be able to stay on the track for this might mean that this will pass at 30%, but we've still got to keep that tender on somehow. Okay, a slower test. I think this is the P2's best chance of passing. 30%. Nope, we're off folks. I think the P2 is out for the count. Let's try and get, that, uh, let's try and get a better shot of that front pony coming off. So the science of this is really interesting, isn't it? Because we've not done many tests, really, and already we can quite accurately predict exactly what's going to happen. Anyway, 30, here we go. Yeah, there we go. So it looks like there are two separate issues there. The front pony came off, and then I don't, we'll have to check the slow motion, but it looks as though then the front driver's coming off as well. Could be the, the front pony got caught on something, I don't know. I'll just have to show you the slow-mo, and you make up your mind. Comment down below what you think happened. So round two was fascinating. We have lost three of our locos and two of our remaining locos have strikes. So what have we learned from this? Well, badly laid track with gaps between the fish plates and fish plates that are not connected together properly, they expose a weakness in a locomotive stability. So wheels without much of a load on them, lightweight tenders, they are gonna jump off the track at speed. Speed is the other factor in this, I think. At lower speed, we saw a big improvement across most of the locos. So yeah, high speed, badly put together pieces of track, that is a killer for quite a lot of locos, but not these, not necessarily. So we're gonna to have to up the game once again, 
round three, the worst track I can come up with. So in the first two rounds, I looked at bad track design and also bad track laying. This time I'm adding an extra dimension to the bad track layout, and that is height. So as you can see, we start on a straight piece of track and then we've got this lollipop stick underneath the piece of track and then it's nailed down either side, which creates a real bulge in the track. And this might simulate um, a gap between baseboards when the height isn't equal, maybe something stuck underneath the track, uneven surface, something like that. So that's the first obstacle. And then we've got the same thing, but on a curve. I think that's gonna be even worse. So a bulge on a curve. And then next we've got another curve bulge. This time the bulge is on one side of the track, on the inside of the curve. So that is gonna be even worse. And if somehow a loco manages to make it past that, We've got this little phenomenon on the end, and that is a piece or two of foam underneath the track which has been pinned down really forcefully. And the effect of that is that the sleepers buckle very slightly and that pulls the two rails together. The sleepers go down in the middle and the tracks come in and it actually reduces the gauge of the track by about 0.3 millimeters, which could be quite significant. So let's see how this goes. Let's pop the pecket onto the track and let's give it the 50% test. I think the small wheelbase of this loco might be enough to save it, but let's try 50%, main bulge, curve bulge, one side bulge, and the gauge mess up. All right, and backwards. All right, so the Peckett has now passed all of my tests. Amazing, that's kind of what I predicted at the start. So let's try a larger loco, let's try it with the pannier. Oh, this is gonna be interesting, okay. Go, 50%, oh my word. Okay, no problem, I'm surprised. Is this test not as hard as I thought? Yeah, we've got another winner there, folks, another winner, there we go. Right, the precedent, will the precedent derail? All right, so this precedent is fast, and don't forget, it's already had a strike, so if it derails now, it's over. Here we go. Okay, reverse. Yeah, absolutely no problem at all. Maybe this test is not the challenge I thought it was gonna be. Maybe not, let's see if the D16 agrees with that. Okay, 50%, here we go. And in reverse. Cool, blimey. Right, so we've got four locos passing this test. I thought all but the 040 would fail, crike. Okay. Let's go with the class 29. Come on, let's get one loco with this setup at least. No, no problems at all. And that means folks, I'm gonna have to modify this setup. Every piece of this track has got one lollipop stick underneath it. Let's bump that up a little bit. Right, so I've now got three much bigger bulges in different places, and yes, that is something that I hope never to have to explain to a doctor. So we've got this bulge here, which is now less of a bulge and more of a hump on the straight. Oh man, and then we've got this bulge on the curve, which again is a hump now, I would say. And then we've got some much more severe banking on the final curve, which, you know, if any loco survives that, I will be super impressed. So let's try the Peckett. Come on, Peckett. I think you're my, you're the horse I'm betting on for this test. All right, 50%. Good luck, Peck. Hump passed. Hump two passed. Banking. Ooh. <laughs> it stopped. But it, oh, I don't think it, is it going to tip? Are we in danger of tipping a loco here? I don't think so. Right, let's try it in reverse. So it cut out, but it didn't derail. That's interesting. So wheels must be leaving the track somehow. I'm not sure how that works. But there we go. <laughs> let's have a quick look at it going over some of those humps then from different angles. Cool. That is impressive, but the Peckett has passed. And there's a very good chance that no other loco will.
Okay, the Backman Pannier tank. Better or worse than the Peckett? Uh, pause the video and decide. Uh, comment down below if you want to. Let's find out. Let's see if the Pannier likes the humps. Let's find out. Come on. Whoa. First strike. Oh, let's take a look at that. So it got over the first hump without any problems at all. And then second hump on the curve is the one that killed it. Very interesting. Oh. <laughs> wow. So I wonder what's going on. So there is a point on the first hump where it transitions from resting on its back driver and the front driver is in the air and then it has to come back down with the front drivers resting on the track. Now if you do that on a curve, when the front drivers come down, they're not going to be on the track anymore, and I think that's the problem. So on that note, let's do the second hump a little bit more slowly, shall we? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's off. Out of interest though, how does it handle the banking? Okay, let's take it steady. <laughs> so amazing, this roller coaster like banking is not throwing the pannier off. Cool, oh, that's ridiculous. Imagine if that was real, how frightening that would be. I think if I do it at 50% speed, it's going to derail. But let's do it anyway. I'm going to hold it. Oh no, no, it didn't. Okay, well, I'm not pushing my luck anymore with that. Uh, unfortunately, the pannier is. Out. So I'm fairly certain that the precedent will also fail on this test, so I'm not going to ram it up to 50% speed and risk damaging it. We'll just take it slow this time and watch it over the humps. <laughs> I love that word. And um, yeah, we'll just uh, see what it's going to do at slow speed. So here we go. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> the drivers are off the track. <laughs> Might need to do that a bit faster after all then, okay. Holy cow, <laughs> it did it. Ah, oh, derailed on the reverse, what a shame. Let's try one more time, that was quite impressive. Is it? Oh, the tender, yeah. Tender's off again. All right, sorry, precedent, you're out. <laughs> oh, I lost the tender. Okay, sorry, precedent, you're out. I don't want to keep doing that because I do not want to damage you. So in order to crown a winner in this round, we've got to knock out the D16 and the Class 29. So let's get the D16 on. Right, let's see. Will the front bogey stop this from working? <laughs> you bet it will. Let's try that again. Slowly this time, I think. I think that worked better last time. Right. Maybe it'll just stop. Right. So, yeah, seriously derailed. So, I'm going to keep experimenting, but unfortunately, the D16 is out. So, let's see what's actually happening here. Let's try and go even slower. So, the front driver is off now. But now all wheels are back on. That front bogey is lifted way off the track. And I'm guessing it's going to come down after the curve starts. Oh, yeah. For some reason, it just doesn't come back down straight again. So let's put it back on and carry on with the test. Anything else going to happen? Front driver's off and have also derailed. So there's just no way it's going to do this. And there we go. Let's try the second hump just out of interest. Okay, same again. Yeah, it's done that. So it seems my first nasty hump is the worst one. And the banking is all right as well. Let's go a bit faster then. <laughs> so it did it in reverse. It actually did it in reverse. But forwards, no. So sorry D16, you're out. That means there's only two locos left. So the only loco that hasn't tried this test is the Dapol Class 29, and obviously it's quite a lot different from the 040 that's already passed this test, except it's kind of like two 040s coupled together with a large body. 
So will this work? Let's find out. So let's try it over the big hump. Yes. The humping curve. Oh, it's off on the humping curve. Okay. So probably getting the same effect as the pannier on there. Let's have that again. Yeah. Sorry, class 29, you are not able to complete this test, which means we have every loco but one knocked out. So that is quite an interesting conclusion, I think. Uh, the message then is, unless you're planning to run just Hornby 040 packets or similarly short wheelbase 040s, then you do need to worry about your track work. If you are planning to only run tiny O4Os with a short wheelbase, then it's going to be very difficult for you to design a layout that will cause a loco like this to derail. Of course, though, that only applies when we are not using rolling stock. I think we would see several problems if we started coupling wagons up. I will test that in just a second. But to be honest, most of the locos from today, at least from this small sample, have handled these horrible tracks surprisingly well to the extent that if a loco is reliably derailing on your layout, which you don't consider to be ridiculous, it's probably not your track that is to blame, at least not if a loco is running by itself. But what about that? Let's put some wagons with the Peckett and see what difference that makes. Surely we'll get some derailments. So this is the best possible scenario. Two short wheelbase open wagons with the 040. Let's see what happens, nice and steady. Both wagons are still on, both wagons are still on. Lots of wheels leaving the track. But that was a success, very surprising. Reverse, oh, okay, reverse killed it immediately. So, needless to say, this is not an experience you want <laughs> if you're building a model railway. <laughs> so, sort of inverse banked turns, not a great design choice, I'm gonna say. I mean, you do what you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Big humps in the track, again, I don't recommend it, but this little train is not having trouble with it. There we go. I mean, that is super impressive. Let's see what happens to a coach. I'm determined to prove that rolling stock will derail on this. Okay, so these Hornby LNER Teaks, these have derailed on me on just regular points. So this is definitely going to go wrong. So the... The track is actually going up inside the underframe of the coach between the supports. It's unbelievable, folks. <laughs> Last go. <laughs> yeah, straight off. <laughs> oh, sorry, Peckett. Oh, I feel bad. I can't do that again. So there you go. That is the conclusion. If you do a little bit of research in designing your track plans and you avoid all the obvious pitfalls, then you'll be very unlucky if your track doesn't work properly. And I think that's quite a positive message. So I hope you've enjoyed the experiment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. All right. Cheers, everybody.